Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Spiffing Brit, and today you'll join me in Command and Conquer General's Zero Hour. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we are finally playing a game in the Command and Conquer franchise. This franchise is wacky, it's crazy, it makes absolutely no sense, and it is just a straight up Bonkers Brigade Fest 24 7. If I had to compare it to any other RTS game, I'd say it's similar to Empire Earth, but if the game developers decided to snort 17 thousand kilograms of loose leaf tea before actually designing the thing. This game is wacky, it's crazy, and there's a very good reason why it has a very loyal and devoted and very entertaining following. But of course, ladies and gentlemen, is it a perfectly balanced game? Or are there many exploits? Well, phew, of course, I only play the most perfectly balanced of games, so there wouldn't be any exploits in this. No, 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 no. This game's been out for years. Surely they were patched a long time ago. And you're right, they are. The exploit that I'm going to be showing off today, the Unlimited Scud launch, was an exploit that was in this game upon release. However, no one's been able to get it to work because it was patched four times. That's right, they've patched this exploit four separate times and yet nobody can seem to get it to work anymore. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thankfully, using the fantastic tastes of Yorkshire Tea, I've been able to sit down and we are going to be bringing back a classic exploit which hasn't been seen for a very long time. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's hop into a good bit of Command and Conquer Generals. And for that, of course, make sure you're sat back, you're relaxed, you have a nice warm cup of tea, and you've done 17 salutes to the Queen, whose painting you should probably have adorned ever so slightly above your computer. And you know what, if you're such an incredible person, you might have even liked this video already and left your comment about your favourite Command and Conquer game. My goodness, those kinds of people are just downright fantastic. Anyway, let's dive into this game. But first, let's see how the multiplayer is doing. Oh my goodness, it actually works. Okay, um, let's connect to the online multiplayer. Oh, it's just checking for updates. Okay, we have to make sure there's been any updates. I mean, there has been a total of maybe five updates to this game and that was it, so we can't be too certain. I mean, the last one was several years ago, but you never know what the developers might have done since then. I'm sure they haven't gone out of business or anything like that. What's this? Cannot connect. Unable to establish a connection with the Command and Conquer General Zero Hour servers. Please check your your internet connection. Oh, of course, yes. I'm terribly sorry, game. The sole reason I'm not able to play multiplayer with my five whole friends that I have is simply because my internet connection is wrong. Of course it is. Why didn't I think of that sooner? Yes, it must be that dodgy ethernet cable of mine and that fiber internet connection I have. My goodness. It certainly has nothing to do with the fact that GameSpy as a business went out several years ago. No, no, no. It's got nothing to do with the closing down of GameSpy. As that is the case, it looks like we're going to have have to do a single player skirmish game and you know what that sounds fantastic now this game basically is three main factions and a bonus faction you have the USA China and the GLA USA of course are the Americans they're meant to be high-tech few units but elite units China are meant to be kind of medium tech but have overwhelming numbers and the GLA are just meant to be a bonkers braid outfit of literally complete and utter whack jobs 170% of the weapons of the GLA greatly break almost everything in the Geneva Convention. This faction is a complete and utter meme fest, and that's exactly why we're going to be playing as them. But who are we going to be playing against? An easy army, a medium army, a hard army? Honestly, it makes no difference, but because I like to take things slow and relaxed, I'll be, of course, playing against a medium army because I don't want to be rushed immediately. <gasps> we can choose our colors. Oh, fantastic, right. We're going to make the enemies red and we're going to be blue. Fantastic. When it comes to starting cash, we want the standard basic 10,000. And for game speed, let's have it nice and slow. I don't like to rush things in this game, ladies and gentlemen. Neither does the Queen. The Queen doesn't like things rushed. No one likes a rushed cup of tea. So take things slow. Make things smooth when you play a lovely game. So anyway, I mentioned earlier that this game has an absolute ton of exploits. And there are quite a few. Most of which have been patched, but a few still exist in this game. One of my favourite and fun ones, which I'm sure some of you know about, is the American Chinook Helicopter Glitch. Basically, like most RTSs, you can load up units into transports in Age of Empires. Empires 2 you have boats, in Empire Earth you can also have boats, in Rise of Nations there are also boats, and in Skyrim if you want to transport units quickly you just use levitating buckets. But no, this game decided you could also transport troops via helicopters, you can pick them up, drop them off, but also if they're loaded into a helicopter, infantry should have the ability to shoot, and you know what, that makes sense, if you're flying in a Chinook and you're seeing an enemy and you're in the helicopter, why not shoot an M16 at the side of it, what could possibly go wrong? So this game allows 
allows that to happen. However, of course, Chinooks can also carry vehicles, like for example, a fully working Abrams tank. Now, let it be known that Abrams tanks cannot fire outside of a Chinook, because that would be absolutely stupid. You can't really have fully operational tanks firing out of moving helicopters. Except you can, because if you load up your tank with one infantry also in the Chinook, because the infantry can shoot out of the Chinook, the game decides so can everything else in the vehicle, including long-range artillery pieces and also tanks, meaning you can have some of the fastest tanks in the game strapped onto the side of Chinooks. Now that's good fun. However, the exploit we'll be doing is the Scud Launcher. And you know what, I think the best way to show it off to you, ladies and gentlemen, is just to dive right into the game. Against an unknown random army, who knows who we're going to get. It's just going to be a simple 1v1, most importantly, it should be good fun. Alright, let's dive into this game. Now, as you can see, this game has some unique textures. My goodness, don't even get me started on the fact that this game can't run at anything over 25 frames per second. Now, as the GLA, as I mentioned, our entire army is a hodgepodge of random dudes, and part of that includes having an entire workforce of unpaid peasant farmers. Oh my, it's just fantastic. So we're going to be increasing our number of unpaid peasant workers, as they're going to be making up the backbone of our economy. Now, this game also has some fun bonuses. If you, say, manage to defeat enemy units, your general levels up, and leveling up your general comes with some good bonuses. We could, for example, get long-range scud launchers, which fire deadly anthrax across the battlefield. <laughs> Geneva Convention. Or you could get, I don't know, technicals, which are just jeeps with guns mounted onto the back of them. And you know what? For some reason, they're better than the anthrax launchers. Don't ask why. Now, this game has some unique textures, to say the least. I mean, look at this fantastic building design here. It is definitely a circle. Well, not quite. This game has some fun textures. It has some fun landscapes as well. For example, we appear to have landed in Switzerland. I'm not really sure, but this is certainly looking pretty European. And also, because we are the GLA, we don't even have access to a mini-map yet. Yes, we have to actually start researching stuff like that, and so we can't even see the whole map. Goodness, some fantastic game design there. And when it comes to our unit designs, you can quite clearly see that there are some pretty unique choices when it came to actually having units. I mean, there is a reason this game basically got banned in Germany, but it's a timeless classic nonetheless. Now, the building that we're rushing towards is this building here, the Scud Storm, a fantastic building that costs five thousand dollary dues to build. However, you need to build a chain of buildings beforehand in order to even get the option to build it. But what we'll be doing in the meantime, whilst we're slowly getting our economy up and running via mining various resource nodes, we'll be setting up a fantastic, brilliant army comprised mostly of just jeeps. Now, when it comes to Command and Conquer games, Command and Conquer General Zero Hours is often regarded as one of the better of the options. Certainly all of the modern Command and Conquer games go down in history as the greatest Command and Conquer games. I mean, just look at the Steam reviews of them. Evidently everyone loves them. Ah, oh, we've managed to spot an enemy vehicle over there. My goodness, now how are we going to contend with that? Naturally, we're not going to do anything. We are just simply going to wait. Now this is where most players would probably start rushing towards the enemy. No, no, no. We have no intention of such a thing. We instead want to just have a nice sit back, relax, and slowly build up a scud launcher. And for that, we're going to need to spare five grand lying around. Come on, glorious supply slaves. Keep grabbing those boxes, moving them from left to right. There we go, that's all they have to do. Effectively, the entire economy of, of every single army in this game appears to come off of the back of unpaid Amazon workers who are simply moving things around in a warehouse. Oh my goodness, it would appear the enemy is starting to attack. A fantastic first sign. However, we're probably going to be able to win this one, no problem whatsoever. Yes, it's actually working. We're managing to defeat the Americans with the glorious technologies of machine gun fire. Yes, tanks versus machine guns. We were always going to win. Now, there is one special unit in our arsenal, which I cannot mention for fear of YouTube deciding that my channel should no longer exist. And that's this lovely guy here, who we can run into cars. Oh my goodness, are they attacking again? They are. Right, run! Oh, that was a bit too close to friendly units. Oh, well, that's fine. So yes, this lovely unit here, who has a certain amount of things strapped to him, has the ability to run into this car here, and then he can send that car on a merry journey. Go car, go! A fantastic success. And we're almost ready to have our Scud launcher. And there we go, we have the 5,000 necessary to build the fantastic Scud Storm. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Go and slap down this building here and get on with it. Now, one thing this game does have, similar to almost all other RTS games in the universe, is the ability to group units. So, for example, I have grouped the Scud Storm into group two. I've grouped my infantry into group one. Now, one new group your units, you can get them to auto-attack a certain position on the ground. In the same reason, I could hit two and try and get the 
scud to auto attack. Oh god, they're going for this. They're going for the scud. Okay, now our lovely scud system is almost ready. It's at 8 to 90% construction. Now, as soon as you get one of these late game super weapons online, it should take you five minutes before you can launch it. And then once you've launched it, you can launch it again and again and again. But you're going to have to wait. As you can see, a timer is starting in the top right. The enemy player will be able to see that in five minutes time. My fantastic scud launcher will be ready to go. Oh my, we need to defend it. Now, one thing you can do is group all of your units into groups one and two, and then select both group one and two. And then when both are selected, you then want to switch all groups into group two. Group two is the group which has the scud launcher in it. Now, when it comes to ordering troops around in this game, there are several ways you can do it. You can tell them to move, or as you can see, there are a couple of infantry sat here, and we could tell them using the fantastic control and then click key to auto attack to this area. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to tell all of these units to auto attack on the ground nearby. Now, our armies are immediately going to attack. However, you might notice that the Scud Launcher, which can't actually attack for another three minutes, has just let off an entire volley. And now the entire countryside has been tainted by nuclear fire. Oh my. Yeah, and uh, it's just going to keep going. It will. It will just keep going. Now, you see, this game basically patched it so that if you had the Scud Launcher in a group, you wouldn't be able to actually auto fire onto the ground and force fire. However, it turns out you can. If you simply move the groups around a bit, you most definitely can. Now, we can actually launch these practically anywhere, including right up here where we can see the enemy has moved. As we can see quite clearly, the enemy have started an operation up here to gather resources. However, they won't be doing that anymore because we've just absolutely covered the area in horrifically poisonous gases. And the thing is, we can blind fire into positions on the map that we can't even see. Oh my goodness, these trucks, what are they doing? Trucks, you need to get out of the way. <laughs> the tiny little trucks, they're great, they're really fast, but my goodness, if they get anywhere in contact with anything, they just immediately die. Anyway, one thing we discovered is up this road is a enemy Gatling gun turret. Yep, so naturally we're going to try and put a stop to that with a good old couple of volleys of missiles and all. It looks like the enemy are trying to move some tanks up, but tanks don't really matter when you have an absolutely flying death ray. And also, you can have more than one. If you want multiple scud storms, go for it. The game doesn't mind. The game says this is perfectly fine. So let's get our group selected again. Get group number two and it would appear that, uh, yep, things are looking good. I imagine that turret's probably destroyed. So I'm going to send all of our army over to the left. You know, we're going to march into the enemy base. That seems like a great idea. Come on, lovely little jeeps. What do you spot? Oh, that's some kind of house. Oh, and there's some enemy bombers of some kind. Right, that's fine. Let's just uh, drop the scud down right about there. So we've detected that around here somewhere, there are some enemies. So, of course, naturally, the best way to deal with that, drop down a very large amount of missiles. And away they go. And even though I can't actually see all of the units I destroyed, my general has just leveled up. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to make it so that each and every single time we take out a building or unit, we get a certain percentage of its value. Oh my goodness, we're getting attacked here. Wait, please don't launch the scuds, because the scuds will just damage it. Okay, no scuds, please don't fire scuds. My goodness, they keep trying to destroy our beautiful scud. Can't believe it, some people. And our scud storm is actually ready. Finally, five minutes has passed and we can actually fire off a regular normal scud storm. So let's do that and let's drop it down right here because apparently that's where the enemy base is. Oh my, yes, the enemy base is most definitely here. So we're going to fire off one scud storm and naturally we won't be able to do that for another five minutes, excluding we kind of can because I'll just immediately fire off another volley over here. Come on, scud storm, land, do something beautiful. Yes, oh, fantastic. And of course, the money's just going to keep on ticking up because as soon as we destroy a building, a certain percentage of that building suddenly becomes ours. Oh my, and apparently there's some kind of enemy set up over here. Well, that'll have to be dealt with. Right, send over one volley. Fantastic, that's one volley down. I think one final volley over here and our enemy might actually be defeated. My goodness, things are looking very good. Oh my goodness, the money is really starting to rack up now because at this point, every time an enemy is defeated, we get about 40% of its value back immediately and and, uh, we never even met that unit. We never even saw half of the units we've defeated. Oh my goodness. Infantry, can you not walk into the enemy positions? Oh wait, we're, we're victorious. We did it. Well, I think that's one of the fastest games of Command and Conquer Generals that's ever happened. <laughs> What is this? Oh boy, okay, so units created 36. Mm, units lost 69. Units destroyed 69. Ah, yes. 
another glorious victory for the spiffing brit tactical analysis is a system where the game basically tells you how you could have improved uh, the games just doesn't know how to comprehend the strategy that i just pulled off now this works in almost all plays i hear that there is an actual online community for this game don't think it's very big but hey if you actually still play command and conquer generals to this day hats off to you give me a shout how do i get in on this action because this game is really good fun and wacky but yes you can pull off this exploit in multiplayer if you want quite happily quite easily it's absolutely no problem at all However, it might be a bit of a scummy move to do, but hey, but ending friendships is what we're all about over here at Spiffco. But hey, if you want to actually start friendships, why not consider starting a brand new friendship by giving that someone special in your life a lovely cup of tea in a very own Spiffco mug. That's right, it's merch segue time. Do 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 do. Yes, merch. Thanks to the lovely people over at the Yorkscast, we actually have a limited time discount of 15% off using the fantastic code T700K. You're going to get more off than any any other code the Yorks cast have and it doesn't just work on my goods you can buy other people's merch not that you should want to do that because I mean no other merchandise out there can improve your charisma stats by up to 700% the merch may or may not even activate god mode the scientists aren't quite certain yet nonetheless it's out there anyway ladies and gentlemen I think that's probably all I've got time for today I'm afraid I'm actually heading off to uh, gamescom over the next few days so when this video comes out I'll actually be away it's good fun I've basically been getting involved more with the Yorks cast and they've been kind enough to take me out to Gamescom to play a couple of brand new games with them. So I'm afraid I'm basically going to be having almost a week-long holiday. I know, it's absolutely terrible. Where are you going to be getting your exploits from? Well, don't worry, I'm sure we'll be able to come back with a vengeance. And of course, to never miss an upload, make sure to hit that bell button, because for some reason, YouTube may or may not decide to show you if I upload. So if you want a little bit more spiff in your life, then make sure to do just that. Anyway, I've been the Spiffing Brit. I hope you've all enjoyed watching me break the Geneva Convention today, and heck, Maybe you've enjoyed it enough to give the video a like and leave a comment about your favourite aspect of the Geneva Convention. My goodness, you lovely people. As always, a huge thank you to each and every one of my majestic patrons who make these fantastic videos possible. Each and every one of you are fantastic. All of you new ones, all of you old ones, all of you British ones, and all of you soon-to-be British Empire citizen ones. Thank you very much. And if you're wondering what video to watch next, then look no further than this one on screen now. It's been handpicked by myself to be absolutely perfect perfect for you if you've enjoyed this video. Trust me, you're gonna absolutely love it. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I've been the Spiffing Brit, and I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Goodbye for now, and have an absolutely lovely day.